Welcome, welcome, my friends. You are listening to The Chambers of His Heart with your host, Deacon DJ Nicholas on Victory Place Radio, Revealing Christ Where You Are. Today's message is titled, The Shepherd's Rod and Staff. And my main text is taken from Psalm 23, verses 1 to 4. And it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Father, we bless you, mighty God. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for your word. We pray that, mighty God, souls will be saved. We pray that the hearts of those who are already in fellowship with you will be encouraged and motivated. We pray that your kingdom will be established upon earth. We pray for testimonies in your name. Many of us are able to recite the 23rd Psalm from the heart. I think it's possibly one of the most popular psalms. The most familiar lines are, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let me ask you this. Do we clearly understand what David is saying in this psalm? Or do we only have an idea? Many persons have elaborated and explicated this psalm. My focus today will not be on the entire psalm, but specifically on verse 4, which says, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I have heard and read this psalm many times before. For some reason, and I believe it was God, while reading it this past week, verse 4 became more vivid. While reading and meditating on the psalm, I tried visualizing what David was saying. When David walked through the valley of death, his statement stood out to me explicitly. When he confidently declared, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. My team today is finding total comfort in the shepherd. Should we put our total trust in him when going through our dark valleys? Or should we help by keeping watch? Let's search the scriptures together, my friends, as they reveal the true character of the shepherd and the significance of of the rod and the staff. The first thing I want to highlight is the purposes of the rod. First, I want to make note that little distinction can be drawn between the Hebrew words used for rod and staff. I just quoted from James Orr. Sometimes the word rod can be used interchangeably for staff, as they have very similar purposes. Nevertheless, after doing some research, we can conclude that the rod in many occasions was associated with correction and can also be used as a weapon in the hand of the shepherd. A. It's a rod of punishment. Here in Psalm 89 verse 32, the rod is used to punish. And it reads, I will punish their sin with the rod, their iniquity with flogging. We know that the rod can be used to punish the enemies of God and the enemies of God people. So when we are in any situation, there is no need for us to fear that our enemies will overcome or overtake us. If we are his sheep, then our enemies are his enemies. The shepherd is properly furnished to punish the wolves or the serpents that try to attack the sheep. B. The rod is is used as a rod of correction. A rod can be used for disciplining wayward sheep. In Proverbs 13 verse 24, the rod is used to discipline, not within the intention to harm or hurt, but to correct from a heart of love. It says, whoever spears the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Growing up as a kid, I remember my mom would spank me or discipline me in some way or the other. At that time, I didn't understand what she was doing. As a matter of fact, the more my mom corrected me, the more I rebelled or became stubborn. I remember I used to get 
spanking a lot for studying my book. And what I would do is just sit and look in it because she was forcing me to study. I made up my mind intently. I'm not going to study. I'm just going to look <laughs> in the book. But you know, that's how kids are. I am now a grown man and have kids of my own. If my son takes up something dangerous, I will take it from him. He will begin to cry because he interprets me as, it, as me punishing him or doing something bad to him. But what he doesn't know is that it's dangerous for him. And I am able to foresee the danger as his parent or his shepherd. He interprets what I'm doing as me punishing him or taking away his fun. But I know it's for his protection because I am the shepherd placed in his life. You may ask yourself, would David need to be disciplined while going through the valley of death? Yes, I believe he would. Because if he were to do it totally from a physical reasoning without being divinely led, he wouldn't be able to come out through the proper exit, but more than likely take some shortcut like we so very often do. The rod keeps us in check. See, the rod is also a rod of protection. A rod is said to be used as a club or throwing stick to defend against predators. So it's not focused solely on punishing our enemies, but it also protects us from our enemies. While David went through the valley of the shadow of death, while he went through his darkest hour, his midnight enemies attacked. Whether they were physical, mental, or an emotional enemy such as fear, whatever form they came in, be assured that enemies attacked. Evil was present, as the psalm said. Whether it came from the hills, from the rocks, from the bushes, we don't know. But evil was present. He said, I fear no evil. David had no need to fear. He was comforted knowing that his good shepherd was more than equipped to deal with his situation. One of the things I wanted to clearly understand as well is that a valley of the shadow of death isn't limited or restricted to a physical place or a particular time. Many of us are going through our valleys at this moment. Many of us are about to be overtaken with fear and anxiety. Many of us have has to remain strong, not to get a mental breakdown. We see the evil attacking from every corner. But please, my friends, never forget that the good shepherd sees and he knows. Never lose faith, but be reminded that he's the protector of his sheep and he's very well equipped to do the job. When we hear about the valley of death, I believe most of us think about a forest or David in the wilderness or something of that measure. But we don't realize that a valley could be any form of debilitating situation, any form of crippling circumstance. We could be at home, but mentally we are so uncomfortable and not settled because we are wondering how we are going to face tomorrow. We are wondering how we are going to get the kids in college. We, we, we are so troubled and encompassed with, 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 with what life presents us. And to another man, it may not be much, but to every man, his burden is the heaviest. So that could be our valley. D, it's a rod of examination. The rod is also used to assist in examining and counting individuals in the flock. The rod is sometimes used to search through the wool of the sheep, parting the wool, determining the condition of the sheep, if there were any blemishes hiding under the wool. If you examine all of these elements, my friend, it's evident that the rod is ultimately to protect the sheep. Even if the rod is used in the capacity of a disciplinary device, the rod is all for the good of the sheep. Today's message is titled, The Shepherd's Rod and Staff. I just spoke on the first point, which is, or highlight, I should say, which is the purposes of the rod. Now I move to my second highlight, the purposes of the staff. And please be reminded that we are going through verse 4 of the 23rd Psalm that ends saying, For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, 
they comfort me. Here are the purposes of the staff. The staff serves several different purposes. A, it's a gathering staff used to gather the sheep into a flock. The staff gathers the sheep together so they can be <coughs> sorry, intimate with each other. Regarding us as sheep, we are gathered so we can fellowship with each other. Hebrews 10.25 states, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. B. It's a guiding staff used to guide the sheep by applying pressure to an individual's flank. This, however, is one of the main purposes I want to focus on of the staff. C. It's a recovering staff. It's used to extricate sheep from bad situations. Isaiah 53 verse 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Matthew 18 verse 12 states, How think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains and seek that which is gone astray? My friends, the shepherd has a recovering staff. Many times we drift, we go off course, we go our own way. We leave the flock to find somewhat what we believe is greener pastures or greener grass. When we are out of the covering of the shepherd, we are vulnerable to get attacked by the enemy. When we are in the nemesis ter territory, the enemy has all right to kill us. But then the staff of the shepherd grab hold of our neck and pulls us right back into the fold, into safety with the rest of the flock. Just take a minute and just imagine a sheep. It is said that sheep is one of the dumbest anim animals. <laughs> and we are considered and very similar to sheep. <laughs> Dumb in the fact that we easily go astray, we are easily led. When a sheep is following the shepherd, sometimes he's distracted. He may see a little water and decide to leave the rest of the flock to go to the water. He may see some greener grass or some grass and say, you know, I didn't have enough earlier. Let me go over there to the greener grass. But many times there is danger surrounding and the sheep is not even realizing that some wolves are hiding in the bushes or there's a snake right under, under the leaves. He's not seeing that danger. But when he goes astray just about his own business, doing, doing his own thing, following his, his desire to fulfill his own appetite, then a staff comes around his neck from the shepherd and pulls him right back into the flock out of danger. Similar to the rod, the staff helps the sheep, especially in directing the sheep. We are no different from sheep. We easily go off track and need redirecting. Glory be to God for his staff of protection. The third thing I want to highlight is that the rod and the staff is in the hands of the shepherd. In the shepherd's hands, they represent A, total authority. The staff represents authority. In the hand of Moses, the rod was a mere stick. But when God decided to use the rod of Moses, it became a figure of authority. In Exodus 4 verse 20, it was called the rod of God. Just a mere stick while you standing sheep in the hand of Moses became a figure of authority in the hand of God. The rod was turned into a snake, devouring the snake of the enemy. The rod was used to turn the river Nile into blood to confound the enemy of the children of God. The rod was raised to part the Red Sea so God's children or God's sheep could pass through safely. The rod represents a figure of authority and power when used by God Almighty. Even Christ was referred to as the rod in Micah chapter 6 verse 9. And it reads, The Lord's voice cried unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. 
hear you, the rod, and who appointed it. If the rod is in the hands of the Almighty, why should the sheep be afraid? Moses, my friends, was, was seen as a type of Christ. We call it typology. Here we have him using a rod to make the path of the sheep clearer. In other words, similar to our great shepherd, as David would, would call him, he makes the path clear for us, the sheep. Just like Moses leading the children of Israel, he raised the rod to part the Red Sea so the children could go through while the enemies were kept at bay. The shepherd protects and makes a path clear for the flock. B, the rod and staff in the hand of the Almighty represents total security. Knowing the character of the one who holds the rod and staff is having great confidence and security. John chapter 10 verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. When you have a good leader is wanting. But when you have a leader who is willing to give his life to protect you, it's beyond comforting. Why should I fear knowing that my shepherd has such great authority and my shepherd is willing to die for the sheep? See, it represents in the hand of the Almighty total comfort. The shepherd uses the rod to draw sheep together into an intimate relationship. The shepherd will use his staff to gently lift a newborn lamb and bring it to its mother if they become parted. I just quoted from a shepherd's look at Psalm 23 by Philip Keller. Now this is an awesome thing, my friends. Look how closely this compares to Isaiah chapter 40 verse 11. And it goes, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom. And shall gently lead those that are with young. Amazingly, my friend. All of Isaiah chapter 40, I just quoted about our shepherd, focuses on the comfort of God's people. I don't see it as ironic as the shepherd comforts us. And then I, Isaiah chapter 40 implores or emphasizes on God as our comforter and then refers to him again as a shepherd. Take note that some persons may attribute the purposes of the rod with the purposes of the staff and vice versa. But I want you to understand what they accomplish together in relation to the sheep. When I read that, as I said, that verse stood out vividly. I went through the entire psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me by still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me by the path of righteousness for his name's sake. But when it said, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I say, okay, now he's in danger. Let's see what happened. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. And I said, yes, David, why won't you fear any evil? Because thy rod and thy staff, they comforts me. So I had to take a deeper look into why it is so comforting to know that the shepherd uses a rod and a staff. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize and highlight today. My conclusion, friend, is that David knew quite well the situation a shepherd was always in. David knew quite well the qualities of being a shepherd. So it would be most fitting that he would be the writer of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. David knew how well protected his sheep were. He knew he had to, the task to protect, defend, discipline, guide, care, and comfort his sheep. He knew that we are all like sheep in the Lord's pasture. And if David, as a mortal man with failures and weaknesses, was able to successfully protect his sheep, what comfort he must have received in knowing that the shepherd of shepherds was the mighty God of Israel. 
No turmoil, no distraction, no disaster, no darkness, no evil was able to overcome him once the good shepherd led him. I'll remind you again of the three highlights, my friend. One, the purposes of the rod. It punishes, corrects, protects, and examines the sheep. Two, the purposes of the staff. It gathers, guides, and recovers the sheep. And how often do we need recovery? How often do we go astray and need the shepherd to pull us back into the fold? Thirdly, the rod and the staff is in the hand of the great shepherd. So it represents total authority. It represents total security. It represents total comfort. Be comforted and rest well, my friends, in knowing that the great caring shepherd comforts and protects you with his rod and his staff. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me.